Welcome, Ambassador. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. I do want to speak about the border situation, but I would be remiss if I didn't start by asking you if your country plans to recognize a Taliban-led government. Well, we'll uh, have to see uh, what kind of government emerges from the talks that are going on in, in Kabul. Uh, we have uh, made it clear that we would like an inclusive government uh, which is broad-based and uh, which can uh, command uh, support within Afghanistan. And we are consulting with all the regional countries in order to have a coordinated approach uh, on the issue uh, of not only the recognition, but going forward, what are the steps that are required to stabilize Afghanistan. And that's our priority, which is to stabilize Afghanistan, uh, for which we will need uh, to have uh, humanitarian assistance, a revival of the economy, inclusive government, uh, and action uh, against uh, count on terrorism. Uh, so all these issues are in the mix. Um, and and the, the question of uh, recognition, I think, will only emerge once there is a government in Afghanistan mm. uh, at the moment. They are still in talks. They have not announced a government as yet. Well, the Taliban is saying they want to put together this inclusive caretaker government. Are you actually confident that the various diverse groups here would actually want to take part in that government? And, and what happens after that caretaker period? Well, uh, I, it's not very really clear, you know, as to whether there will be a caretaker period uh, and how long that period will be. One has to see what emerges from the talks that the, that the uh, Afghans are having between themselves, mm. uh, between the Taliban and other leaders. Uh, they have been in talks uh, for the last few days. Uh, and, and we are hoping uh, that the government which they announced will be an inclusive government, which will have representation from the different ethnicities uh, and different groups mm. in Afghanistan so that they, it can command support throughout the country. You spoke there about stability earlier. Now, given what we've seen in the last day or so, are you concerned about the security situation across the border, especially given that there are other groups as well at play here, including, I believe, dozens of Pakistani militants who were freed during the Taliban advance? Yes, we, we definitely. We, uh, the issue of terrorism emanating from Afghanistan is a, a special concern to Pakistan. Uh, because uh, we have had uh, the Tariq -e Taliban Pakistan, uh, which has been operating from the territory of Afghanistan and which had support from the intelligence agency of the former government, uh, as well as the Indian intelligence agency. And we are hoping uh, that uh, we will be able to root out uh, those terrorists uh, from Afghanistan and neutralize them and as well as other terrorist groups that exist there, including uh, ISIL-K. Obviously, there's also a very sensitive situation on your border, not just to do with security, but also the humanitarian situation. We're already seeing this move by people who are trying to flee Afghanistan to land crossings, especially after what happened near the airport. What are you putting in place to try to deal with that situation? Well, you know, we have flown out about 2,200 uh, diplomats, uh, uh, employees of international organizations, uh, and Afghans who have had emergency needs. Uh, we provided transport to them from our embassy to the airport, made sure they got on the flights. Uh, and uh, we will, of course, see what else we can do in the future, even after the 31st of, of August. We have the United Nations, which has set up a a air bridge between Islamabad and Kabul. And we are flying in and out the UN personnel, uh, humanitarian p uh, personnel that will be needed to provide help to Afghanistan uh, in the emerging situation. They have 14 million people uh, who are food insecure uh, at the present time. They could, and I think if there is a humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan, you could see large outflows of refugees uh, on mm. our borders and the borders of other neighbors. Uh, and we are just not in a position to take more refugees because we have already got 3 million Afghan refugees on our soil. Uh, so it's a big concern for us. Uh, so we have to deal with the humanitarian situation. We have to deal with the terrorist uh, terrorism threat. Uh, and of course, we are hoping 
that as soon uh, as the Afghans are able to form an inclusive government, uh, we will be able to engage with them and, and to move forward on steps to stabilize Afghanistan and stabilize the region. Munir Akram there, Pakistan's ambassador to the United Nations, speaking to us from New York. Thank you, Ambassador, for giving us your time today on Al Jazeera. Thank you, Thank you for having me.